So this is going to be my short video on how to work on program notes. So first of all, when you're working on program notes, you need to know what you're going to be playing so that you can actually start working on the notes, right? So um, what I've got here is just a solo recital program um, from the fall of 2019 that I'm actually just uh, using this template to start reworking for a uh, recital program that I'll be giving later this semester. So the first thing up here at the top, I put who I am and what I'm going to be playing. And um, also here at the top, if I have other people working with me, I can add them in as well. So I could say that I'm going to work with uh, Dr. Plummer on piano and that, um, oh, let's say Brandon Domain is going to be playing um, clarinet. Why not? So I can put, put it in there like that. I also need to say what the recital is. So for me, it would be a faculty recital. For many of you, this might be a degree recital um, or a Masters of Music recital. So MM recital, something like that. You need to put in the date and the time so that the person doing your program, the, uh, the secretary that's going to do your program, will be able to add all that information in, where it's going to be, and what room. I'll try to be as descriptive as possible because this is also how people are going to find you. Then in your program, we're just going to follow the Chicago format um, for programs, right? So um, the name of a, the title of a work needs to be in italics. So you see I've got triad here. That's the name of the work, okay? And then I've got the composer not in italics, just their name, okay? And it's the name that they go by on the music. So uh, Jim Pugh, when you talk to him, he'll ask you to call him Jim, but on Triad, it says James Pugh, so you need to make sure that you say James Pugh, and then you need to say when they're born and what their dates are if they've already deceased, right? So Jim Pugh is still alive, so we just do a lowercase b period space his birth date in parentheses. So you'll notice that I did something similar here. Um, I broke these two small works up with a brief pause. Um, and I just put that in there so people wouldn't think they needed to applaud or something in between. You'll see here that I've got a German work, Stanchen, and I've gone, gone ahead and put in the Unlauts over the A. That's very important to do all of the correct things, even in different languages. So if you're having trouble with Unlauts or accents or anything like that, I can give you all the keyboard shortcuts for that. The internet can do that as well. Notice here that these two works, Stanchen and Aufenthalt, are from a larger work, Schwanke Song which is also italicized by Schubert. And then you'll notice here Schubert is dead, so I've put in his full dates. Okay, so these are also very similar for Alien Loop to Loops and Trombosio. And we did Feeling Me Epsilon on this recital. So I've also put in all of that information. The Symphony Sacre number one needs to be italicized because it's part of the larger work. Um, and we put in all the dates. Also notice that I've put in a translation of the lyrics here. So I've got the um, Italian over here and then the English translation over here to the right. Very important to do that as well. I put joined by with all the people that performed with me on this recital like this. Um, the other thing you can do, and there's, there's nothing wrong with this, is you can actually move this stuff around so that it goes under all the places that you're playing with people. So you'll notice that I've got Feeling Me Absalon and then I was actually joined by all of these personnel uh, on that one. Oh, that's not exactly true. I was joined by some of these personnel. So what I could do under each work, I could put something like this. Um, And then I would list out all those student names there. So, and I could do that under each thing. So if I was joined by Dr. Plummer on Trombocio, I would put Dr. Plummer here. Um, Alien Loop to Loops was with electronic accompaniment. I don't need to say that that's with electronic accompaniment. Uh, the Schubert, that was with so I can do that. Um, so just so you understand, there's a couple different ways of doing that that are all correct in Chicago format. It's really up to you. 
I typically just put join by with everybody and then we'll see them when they're up there and I make sure that I thank them. Okay, so then moving on, sometimes in a program you'll be asked to include your bio. I just have a set bio that I include with everything and I try to update it once a year or so. So that's updated. This one's actually my old one, um, but I would update that and I would just put bio and then that could be printed on the back of the program if needed. You'll notice that I have another translation down here. This is because I wasn't exactly sure if it would fit. And so I'm actually going to ask the secretary that's going to work on this program if we can fit this under these two tunes on the actual program up here, way up here, or if we need to put those on a separate page, which we can do. Okay. And then you'll notice that I've got a space for program notes down here. I'm just going to show you a quick example of how I would work on these program notes on the Begatel by Shane Lamb. So um, we're going to switch over here in a second to um, our, our Safari browser. I'm going to do most of this from the internet and also have a couple of book resources. What I think you should all know is that <clears throat> you should start with a blank document on this. You're going to take notes and then you're going to actually write what you want to say. We're not going to do any copying and pasting. So you'll notice that I'm going back and forth between screens here to show you that. Safari, we're going to all see right. if we can't look up some things about Shane Lamb. So the first thing I did was I just went in and looked up Shane Lamb Composer. And then that opened up his website. Great. Look, he's a teacher, a pianist, a composer, and more. Okay, on his website, oh look, there's some videos of me playing. Cool, I can check these out and get to know these pieces better. Um, if this wasn't me and it was somebody else, I would check these out and I'd press play on Bagatelle and be like, oh, what's this all about? Let's check out this tune. And I'd probably go, huh, pianist was pretty good, trombonist wasn't very good, I can do better. That's what I would think. So first, we do that. We kind of do some, some basic stuff. Let's see if we can't find out some information about him as a composer. Oh, look, we've got all these published compositions. That's cool. Um, he got a bachelor in music degree from the University of Texas at Austin. He studied with this person. Um, teachers also included these people. That's good. Shane received commissions. That's good to know. He's done quite a bit of work. You can get scores for unpublished works to commission new works. Please contact him. Great, great, great. Here's a bunch of things. You can see here that Begatelle is listed right here. It's in, from 2017, so that's going to be useful for my notes. And then it was commissioned by Jonathan Warburton. So then the next thing I need to do is, well, who the heck is Jonathan Warburton? Um, so we need to figure out who that is. So that's one thing we'll do as well. So at this point, I'm probably going to go, okay, I need to go take some notes about this in my Word document. And then I just start taking some notes and say, okay, um, written 2017, commissioned by Jonathan Warburton. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, okay, we need to talk a little bit about who Shane Lamb is. Shane Lamb, composer. What did it say he studied? I can't remember now. Let's go find out. He's in. Uh, he works in Austin, Texas. We'll say who he studied with because that might be interesting, right? That's good information to have. Okay, let's also just look over here. He's also a pianist, so we want to maybe be able to say that he's also a teacher. Let's see what he teaches. He teaches out of his home studio, one-on-one -on -one piano lessons, composition students. Okay, so maybe just put down here: composer, pianist, teacher, private studio. Good. So now we're in pretty good shape on those notes. One thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to look up, for those of us who don't know, who the heck Jonathan Warburton is. So let's just look him up. He must be a trombonist. Oh, we gotta get that J on there, my bad. 
So let's say Jonathan Warburton trombone, so we don't pull up something crazy, right? And we got the reforming trombonist. I'm not sure we want to go to that one. Let's just see here. Jonathan Warburton bass trombone guest artist recital. Looks like he played a guest recital in 2016 at uh, UF. It's one of the world's most active trombone freelance soloists. He's a passionate about creation of new solo literature. Masterclass for helping performers, composers create solo rep. Ah, that's good to know. But where the heck does he teach at or what's he doing, right? Well, let's see if we can't find out. Huh. Maybe we'll go up here to reforming trombone to see if this tells us. Looks a little bit of a bio, right? We're gonna have to search, aren't we? Here we go. Jonathan Warburton, guest artist. British bass trombone soloist. Oh good, he's British, now we know. He's a soloist, champion of new music. This is great. So now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna say, okay, this was commissioned by Jonathan Warburton. He's a British um, trombone soloist. Did I spell British correctly? Yikes. British trombone soloist. Soloist? Soloist. Okay. Um, he commissions new music. Good. Okay. That's starting to feel like we actually have some things that we can actually work with here. Um, let's go back one more bit here. Let's see if we can't just find an actual website. Well, here's another program. Here we go. Here's a bio. We'll take the bio. One of England's most versatile and busiest bass trombonists in the scene today. Good. Birmingham Conservatory. Multifaceted performer, we got all this stuff. Educator and leader performance. He's a world traveler, that's good to know. Nude CD, good. Shared classics. He's actively involved in gymnastics, also good to know. So now that we've got a bio, that's also helpful. We can fill in a couple gaps here using that, but we probably don't need to take notes on that. So now we know who Bagatelle was written for. We know who Shane Lamb is, which we're actually probably going to start with that information in our program notes, okay? And the only thing that we're really missing is, what the heck is a bagatelle? So at this point, unless I looked it up over here, so here's some information about the music. Here's the publisher. You can find this stuff. Bagatelle was commissioned in 2016 by bass trombonist, okay, so, but it was published in 2017. We're going to use that date. Look at this. The... <clears throat> the piece is in A minor. It opens with a determined march-like theme shared by both instruments. The following section uses an ascending Dorian mode scale to, as a primary motive. We love this. This is really interesting stuff, and it's good to have this in your notes. So what I'm going to say is that this is worth copying and putting in your notes. Now, when you do this, you must absolutely... Well, for one thing, put everything in the right font. Otherwise, it looks stupid. Okay. And make sure that it's all the right. Um, whoops, I don't, I don't want a shadow. What am I doing? No shadow. Um, whoops. I just want a text color here. Come on. There we go. That's better. So. We're going to say, okay, this was really useful. We want this. Now, we're going to say that this came, this actually looks like it came from the composer to me. So, from the composer, or the composer writes, and then we're going to make sure that we properly cite this. We're going to put in a footnote. So, let's just make sure that we got that figured out. We go to insert and then we go down here to footnote and we're just going to insert at the bottom of the page. 
boom, we've got a place for a footnote. And for now, we're just going to put in cherryclassics.com. And we're going to put in that this is from Shane Lamb. And we're just going to call this um, work details. Cherryclassics.com. Pretty easy annotation there. See how I did that? And then I got to make sure I put a period right there. Okay. <clears throat> So we've got a pretty good thing going here. We have a pretty good idea of where we're at. The one thing that we don't know is what the heck a bagatelle is. So the Harvard Dictionary of Music is really your friend when it comes to these basic things. And this is a, this is a book. We've got an online version through the library that I can't seem to access today. There is two or three hard copies of this in the office that you're all welcome to borrow when you need to. I'm just gonna slap the book down here. If I go to B, it's on the first page. Bagatelle, French, triffle, a short, unpretentious piece, often for piano and often presented in sets of contrasting tempos and moods. Marin Maïs used the title in, 19, in 1692, and it appeared occasionally throughout the late 18th century. Beethoven's three sets for piano became models for many later composers. Most added descriptive titles. Uh, Anton Webern wrote six Begatelles for string quartet in 1913. So there's a couple of different examples there, but the thing that we care about is the fact that a Begatelle is a short, unpretentious piece. And we can come over here and say, Arbor Dictionary, Begatelle, short, unpretentious piece of music. Now, we don't really need to use it exactly like this, so you'll see how I, I actually include this information. Um, okay, so we're good with our research now. Now we're just gonna write some program notes. Notice that we've got quite a few things here. We're gonna condense this into one smaller piece of information. Notice what I've done is I've actually shut down um, my Safari web browser here, and um, it's actually been, about an hour and a half, I taught a lesson and ate lunch. And so now I'm not hopefully going to, to be distracted by doing any sort of direct quotes and I'll just be able to um, write in my own language what I wanna do. So typically what I like to do is I like to give a little bit of information about the piece and then in a second paragraph I like to give just a little bit of information about the composer. I feel like what I'm trying to do is write a program note that is for both the educated musician, someone who's taken music theory, uh, someone who who really knows <laughs> some of the, some of the things that um, I think are important, and then uh, I'm also trying to write program notes that are maybe for some of my less formally educated uh, audience members. So maybe somebody who just enjoys the trombone and showed up to a trombone lesson for a trombone recital for some reason. So you'll notice that I'm kind of fluctuating between two different worlds here. Um, looks like I still have two different <laughs> fonts, which drives me insane. So let's see if we can't get this all one font better, more better. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look here and see if we can't come up with some program notes. So, <clears throat> actually might give a little bit of information here about Shane Lamb first.
So here's a little bit of background on Shane Lamb that I just used for my notes. That's pretty pretty solid. That'll work out pretty well. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say. So this is hopefully going to tie in here. I got to make sure I italicize this. And then we'll say So we've kind of defined what a bagatelle is. And then I think we can say what the composer has to say about this. Taking these things out as quick as possible so that I don't um, restate what I've already stated. Program Nets, bagatelle, Shane Lamb. Shane Lamb is a pianist teacher and composer from the Austin, Texas area. Lamb has a number of commissions for chamber ensembles, solo strings, piano, and trombone since the early 2000s. Lamb studied with Dr. Yen, we don't know how to pronounce that, at the University of Texas at Austin. Published in 2017, Bagatelle was commissioned, was commissioned by British trombone soloist Jonathan Warburton. A Bagatelle is a short piece of music often associated with keyboard works and meant to be simple and shorter in length. The composer writes, the piece is in A minor and opens with a determined march-like theme shared by both instruments. I think I'm going to go ahead and say uh, both instruments, piano and trombone, just to clarify for my reader. The following section uses an ascending Dorian mode scale as its primary motif before merging this theme with the opening march melody. The bass trombone and piano are equally important roles in this work. The piece is titled Begatelle, as it is short and unpretentious work. Okay, good. So, one of the things that I want to make sure that I point out here is I've used this as a quote. This is a direct quote from the website, and I've, I've um, put that here in my footnote that I'm using this as a quote. You wouldn't have to do that. You could explain in your own words that the piece is in A minor and has this March theme and that it also uses um, ascending mode, uh, ascending Dorian mode um, with the theme later in the work. Um, and you could, you could write about how the piano part is equally as important as the, the trombone part in many ways. Um, it doesn't really matter how you do this, but I think it's just sometimes nice to include um, a direct quote from the composer or a direct uh, quote from a, a program note of some other type. Um, sometimes if you're doing major works that have been performed at really big concert halls like at Carnegie or the CSO Hall um, or for some of the big summer festivals, you can find those those program notes that are professionally written by people who actually write program notes for major major programs and uh, you can you can quote those program notes and the writer is usually shown in that program and you can give them credit for their work with a footnote or um, with an introduction of some sort it you know it's just this is scholarly writing to the max you just need to make sure that you give that person their rightful um, due as being the person that came up with those ideas rather than trying to claim them as your own if that makes sense so to me this is a pretty nice program note this is a pretty good format um, like I said, sometimes I put the composer information afterwards. This time I decided that it was actually a pretty interesting way to introduce him and then talk a little bit more about Jonathan Warburton and the actual piece. So that's how I developed this. Now, um, I haven't had anyone proofread this, and what I would do next is send this on to Katie, or maybe I would send it back to my mother, who's a, who's a journal editor, and have her take a look at it, or another friend of mine 
who I think is a good writer. I've got a friend who's a lawyer who's a fantastic writer, and he always finds things that I miss. Um, so find, send it to somebody that you trust and have them do a proofread. Read it again yourself. This is a long process. If I were really going to finish this, um, I probably wouldn't finish it until maybe a week or two from now because I'm going to send it to other people and I'm going to keep reading it and try to come up with a really refined, good product. So I hope this video helps and shows you what's possible here. The more you do this, the easier it is. Some of you may say, well, that didn't seem so hard. And then you go to do yours and it seems like maybe it's going to take you longer than it took me. Um, I've been doing this a long time and uh, I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it. There's issues with what you probably see in front of you right now. But I am saying that the more you practice this, the easier it'll be. So I look forward to seeing all your program notes yet this semester. Good luck.